Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. My name is Patience Waiderero Awero, and our first reading is coming from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God and Father our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed it, us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his gr glorious grace, which he has freely given us in one he loves. In him we have rede redemption through his blood, for, for the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with, with all wisdom and understanding. He made, he made known to us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put in effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we, we were also chosen, having been pedest, pedest, pedestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in com, com, confirmity with the purpose of his will in order that we, we were the first to put our hope in Christ, mighty be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. He promised, Hol he promised Holy Spirit who is deposit guaranteeing our in inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. And that's the end of our first reading today. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Our second reading will come from the book of John chapter 13 and verse 34. And I read, a new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And that is the word of the Lord. My name is Ruth Mugore. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you and bless you this wonderful day that you've given unto us. It's another moment that you called us for worship in this house. You gave us strength. You enabled us, dear Lord. We have worshipped you. We have called unto your name. Dear Lord, we've lifted your name up high. We've spoken our hearts out. Now it's a moment, a blessed one, that you speak your word in our hearts. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. And now we surrender our body, mind, souls, and spirit unto you. As we culture our body, mind, soul, and spirit with the blood, let it cleanse us from any blockage, the, anything that would hinder us. Hearing you as you speak to us, King of Kings, so that we shall leave this place a blessed people, an edified people, a people who have enlarged their tents of their spirits and their lives, walking in the power and the majesty of God, our Savior. Holy Spirit, breathe upon each one of us the breath of life, the breath of life. Quicken our spirits to grasp the word of God so that we shall walk out as children of the Most High God and live victoriously for the glory and honor of God's name. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. 
It's another day that the Lord has brought us back again in his house, having prevailed over all odds, given us life, having given us victory, enabled, enabled us to prevail over all odds. You know, in the world, there are so many things, but he's given us hope. He's given us strength. He has enabled us to come to this day. And this morning, he gave us life. Hallelujah. There is a word that the Lord has put in my spirit when I was given this service. And the theme that I was given was relationships and interpersonal. Our relationships, interpersonally, how do we relate? And then I asked myself, how do we relate as a household of God unless we know who we are? Hallelujah. And the theme went on and said, encourage each other with these words. Which words? And then it went on, I was told, I was given the theme, love each other deeply. How do we know how to love each other deeply? And when I was seeking the Lord, the Lord just quickened me something in my spirit. The word in Peter says, you are peculiar people. And what makes us peculiar? And that's when I arrived to Ephesians, what the Lord has called us to be. Hallelujah. So we are going to walk through the first chapter, those few verses that have been read, reminding us who we are so that we might comprehend what are we encouraging each other with and how do we love each other and how do we treat each other and who are we in the first place? Hallelujah. Let me say in Kiku, do you tell you we? Do you mean you're your weak? When you don't know who you are, you don't know how to act. Unless you know that you are a child of the Most High God. There's a word that really blesses me in the, in, the, in the scriptures that says, Jesus spoke to the Israelites and said, when he, they were accusing him that he was blaspheming God when he was saying he's the son of God, he turned to the Israelites and told them, ye are gods, but you die like mere men. And whenever I read that word, I normally tell the Lord, God Almighty, a God begets a God. And by your spirit, you begot me. And I became the child of God through being born again. I refuse to die like a mere man. Hallelujah. Because a mere man doesn't have strength, ability, but the gods have. And we came from God. You and I, because God said, let us create man in our own image and likeness. That means you and I, we are created in God's image and likeness. And this one blesses me so much all the more. Because he brought his son who died for us, the very son he spoke about, they spoke about in Genesis, when they were the three, the three holy trinity. And they said, let us create man in our own image and our likeness. What image, what likeness? The image that they were, God Almighty, <laughs> who created all things, who spoke the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and it was with God from the beginning. Nothing was created without it. That means you and I, everything we see, it is this word, the one who said, let us create man in our own image and likeness. That means he wanted this personality to act like him. And once we go reading in Genesis, my friends, you know, it was blessing me as I was going through the scriptures. I could see much. And I was saying, God, give us the ability to grasp who you've called us to be. When you tell us be born again, what you want us to be born into, what you want us to make our, our lives into, and the projections that you want to project in us when we walk with the Lord. In the light of his word, what a glory. The glory that he will bestow in our lives. Hallelujah. Because he said, let us create a man in our own image and likeness. And when he created Adam and took him to the, to the animals and he asked them, name them. Whatever he named them, God didn't change. Tell the other person, God didn't change. That means God has given us, he wanted us in the beginning, mankind, to have the ability to rule and reign with him. But unfortunately, the enemy was crafty. We seemed to have lost it. 
but God didn't allow us to, li- to lose it. He never allowed us to lose it. He gave us a second Adam, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believes, now this is the miracle now, that whosoever believes shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Now the redemption now, this one that we have read, that we were predestined to be conformed to the image of God the Almighty. And God has blessed us in the heavenly realms in every spiritual blessing. Which are these blessings? I want us to understand who we are so that we know how to relate to each other. These spiritual blessings, my sister, my brother, are that which the Lord spoke from the word go. Let us create man in our own image and likeness. Let him have dominion so that we might rule with him. And now he gave us Jesus Christ to bring us back to him. And he blessed us again with every spiritual blessing that once you and I believe, we are restored. Hallelujah. Therefore, the mandate is upon you and it's upon me. Do I believe that what God has said is true, that he has blessed me? And once he sees that I'm believing, he starts activating it in my life. Hallelujah. Through his Holy Spirit. He sees I'm believing. He activates it. He brings the mindset in conformity with him. I start believing who I am. Hallelujah. It is about faith. It's not something that you come and say, we have put it in him. It's the Lord God Almighty because the Lord is a spirit. And them that worship him, worship him in truth and in spirit. And where has he blessed us? In the spiritual realm with all spiritual blessings. And we are spirits too. Hallelujah. He breathed into, Abba, uh, into Adam, the breath of life. We normally say the person is gone because the spirit has departed. Because you are a spirit, you only have a body. I am a spirit, I only have a body. How do, how do I relate with God? I relate with God through the believing in the spirit. Hallelujah. And because he is God, he is able to quicken me and you to a deep understanding, into knowledge, and a transformation takes place. Hallelujah. Are you getting something? From henceforth, that's how we become Christians. That's how you become different. That's how people see you behaving different. Because you are coming into conformity with your God. And when God sees your diligence in seeking him, in agreeing with his word, he implements it in you and I. And he goes on and he says, uh-huh. For he chose us in him before creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Because once you understand his ways, there are things that you are going to take away from your life so that you are able to walk with him. You you start getting the image of God in the inside of you. For God is holy. I love, thank you, praise and worship. Holy, he is holy. You remember that song we sang? Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty reigns, he's holy. He starts changing your inner being with his precepts, with understanding. That's how you become holy. Are you getting me? Once you start obeying, you understand. You remember in the, in, the, in, the, in the commandments he said, do not do this, do not do this. So when you put away that, when you understand the word of God, I cannot steal. I cannot lie. I cannot commit adultery. I cannot kill. When those things are getting out of you, when you understand and putting them away, ah, the image of holiness is shaped in your spirit. Hallelujah. A transformation takes place. You start now becoming, in the image of God, holy. You are called to be holy and blameless. You become blameless. Why? You are not killing. You are not committing adultery. You are not doing those things that the word of God says. So God sees a child is conforming into his own image. And that's why we are called peculiar people in Peter. A peculiar people who do not conform to the things of the world. We were called to be holy and blameless. Mm -hmm. In accordance 
uh, uh, in love. He predestines us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace, and he ravished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made us, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pressure. What is the mystery? That we can be called the sons of God. The mystery, that which he wanted from the word go in the beginning, and we lost it. Now he brings it through Jesus Christ. That once we believe, and he washes us by his blood, we are redeemed. Don't we normally sing, redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. I, and you know, in our Kikuyu culture now, I've heard, I'm hearing, yeah, you know, there, are, there is those redemption, they are going through the goats. They pour the blood and that you are redeemed. But God has given us his only begotten son who became a lamb without blemish, son of the living God, who redeems our spirits. And we, are, we become now the children of the most high God. The mystery is, I will rule and reign with him. And because I've acquired the nature of God Almighty by transformation, through this mystery, he calls me son of the living God. Tell the other person, son of the living God. The world might not see you like that. They call you a peculiar, that one is peculiar. The way he acts, huh? even if you tell him to do this, he can't. But when God looks at you, he sees a son. That's why there is redemption through his son. And this mystery, he goes on working in our lives, you and I. And this is where it comes now. After we have been redeemed, how do we relate with each other when we know who we are? Children of the most high God. This is how we encourage each other. That my brother, my sister, don't backslide. Don't get worried. Come, we pray. No matter what is happening, there is one who calls us his children. And once we call, call unto me and I'll answer you. And I'll show you greater than such about things that you've never known of. That he's going to redeem you from what you are going through. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. You encourage each other from a perspective of knowledge. Knowledgeably. Knowing who you are. Knowing, like today I know what I'm telling you. Because I know who God calls us to be and what he wants me, you and I, to be. A peculiar people, people transformed, relating differently, acting differently. Hallelujah. In loving each other differently. How? When I look at you, because I've been transformed and I've allowed the Lord God Almighty to work deeply in my life. He's given me his mindset. This is what the word says. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. That means even if you hate me, I look at you. I see where you are. I get an understanding. I don't hate you. Instead, I love you. Hallelujah. Because I have the mind of God. How? Even us, don't we act wrongly before the almighty God? Does God hate us? When we go to him, does he cast us away? Uh -uh. He continues to say, even if your sins were as red as scarlet, they shall become as white as snow. Rest a Isn't that love? I know your sins. I know where you are coming from. This is God now saying. I know what you do in your everyday life. I am omnipresent. I'm in present everywhere, day and night. To and You know, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber like you and I. So even if I say I'm going to do this evil, it's at night, he sees. And that he says, he tells me, Rosemary, even though your sins were as red as scarlet, they shall become as white as snow. How? There is redemption through the blood. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed through the blood of the Lamb. And I being transformed, when others act wickedly, I have the ability and the nature to forgive and to let go and to love them and show them the way. 
Hallelujah. Because the one who said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, lives inside me. Do you know what I realized when I was meditating? Do you know there are moments we expect too much from people, only that which God can do to you and I, to you and I. It's only God who can love you and I in a perfect way. And at times in marriages, we look to people, my husband, my wife to love me deeply. They cannot, they don't know your needs. They don't know when you cry. They don't know how to treat you. Only God who knows you through and through. Hallelujah. At times you might tell your husband or your friend or whosoever, why did you do this? They don't know how they hurt you. They don't know how you are wired. They don't know you are a gentle person. Maybe where they are coming from, moe haro, moe kinyararo, you know. But you, because you become a child of God, you are gentle and lowly in spirit. Hallelujah. So let us not expect too much from mankind. Where we hurt more than any other person, and no one understands us, let us go to God and allow him to heal us. And I tell the other person, allow God to heal you. And allow God to make you. Yes, because he's going to make me, Rosemary, in his own image and likeness. <laughs> Even if you tell me, I won't. Those obscenities, me, I cannot engage. My God is not a God of obscenities. Tell the other person, my God is not a God of obscenities. Tell them, my God is not a God of obscenities. Yes, do you know even at times you don't tell people obscenities, but deep within your heart, the obscenities. Don't you make up your mind and say, na niekonyo na, na gweka, isn't it? We relate amicably because we are a peculiar people. We are sons of the living God. I know who I am. I know where I am. God knows where I'm at, a child of the most high God. You know, at times the world treats us in a very rough way because they have not known the Lord. But God normally calls us back again and reminds us, I predestined you before the foundations of the earth. Da we tite the tanobu. Psalms 139. I created you. I wrote your days before you were formed in your mother's womb. So God knew who you would be, what would come your way, what would confront you. If I tell people who hate you, how they will treat you, the way you will become jobless, the way you will be sidelined because A, B, C, D. But he says, I knew you are days. Where are you now? What is making you run away from God? What is making you feel so bad? God is saying, I knew that day but relate well with people because only I can restore you. Hallelujah. Is God making sense? Because I know why I created you. Even when you married that man or woman or when you got that friend, I knew you'd come together, but they could not complete you. I am the Lord God Almighty who completes you. And that's why you'll be able to love each other deeply. Hallelujah. Do you know a spiritual man in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians tells us somewhere there, life in the spirit. The spiritual man is able to govern all things, to make judgment upon all things. Because you can look at me and see Rosemary, she's just being foolish, hmm? obstinate. Do you know there are people who are obstinate? Rosemary doesn't want to grow. When I, you look at me, because you have the mind of Christ, you lead me gently into the things of God. You enlighten, you give me counsel in a gentle way. You try to transform my thinking. There's a friend of mine who tells me normally, I know what you're going to tell me, Rosemary, when she tells me about her woes. I know what you're going to tell me, then I ask her what? A wise man overlooks an offense. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell the other person, a wise man overlooks an offense. It's not everything that you are offended with that you get so angry. Look at the person, where are they coming from? How have they grown? What is their 
spiritual maturity. For God measures us the much he, you have opened your spirit. You have allowed him to work deeply in you. He gives you responsibility. And there's some people who love to take responsibility in the spirit, yet they have not arrived in that place. They fail miserably, even in the house, even at the workplace, even in business, even in church, like here, even in leadership. We are not all perfect. Even my friends here, they are not all perfect. Even me, a preacher, I'm being transformed. Hallelujah. And that's why Paul told the children of Israel, follow me as I follow Christ. That means when I see the footstep of Jesus, I step into it, I as Paul. And you, my hearers, Follow me as you follow, see me following Christ. Because whatever I will download unto you is that which is of Christ. And what is that which is of Christ? Transformation, rulership, taking authority and dominion in my life, in all that pertains to us. And let me tell you something that makes us at times lose heart. When we follow Christ, we were predestined. There are moments, roughness of the world, roughness of the seas, roughness comes into our lives. You find you are lucky. People are treating you badly. Or you are in a wilderness. The Lord wants to make you. Even Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. But when we allow God and know God and listen to God and call unto God, and this is where people go astray, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters. When you see you are praying so much, you fasted so much, you've given your tithes and offerings, it seems like nothing is going on. We forget the word of God tells us, when you have done everything that you can, stand. Do you know what is standing? Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Not only standing, I'm standing on the promises. He's told me once I do A, B, C, D. And a transformation, like I told you, is taking place. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And you know what he does? When you're standing and following him, he blesses us with his Holy Spirit. Who is this Holy Spirit? Jesus said, he will guide you and lead you into all truth. How? Whatever you are going through, he will tell you whether I, Rosemary, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All God is making me and he wants to mature me. He wants to enlighten me so that once I prevail, I can strengthen my brethren. Hallelujah. Aha. Uh -huh. Like today we do sing a song. Paulo Nasila Waliomba Milango Yangereza Hikafunguka. Remember where they were? They were preaching the word of God. They were stoned. Aha. Uh -huh. They were put in prison. They were chained. Put in the inner chambers for no crime. Only preaching. But when they got there, Paul had grown and Cyrus to a certain level of spirituality. They started singing praises unto God. And then the chains fell down. And we read the jailer took the sword. He wanted to kill himself. Because now all the chains in the prison had fallen down. My friends, when we stand and praise God, the chains that are binding us of wickedness and those things that we go through. And our friends, the chains will be broken. Hallelujah. They will be broken. They will see, if a tall malaria and war boy is making this, even I, Rosemary, can make it. Hallelujah. Don't we say, don't we read, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Don't we read that? And he slept overnight in the lion's den. He slept and the lions never ate him. And in the morning when the king cried out, Daniel, servant of the most high God, did the Lord God Almighty whom you serve save you? He said, may the name of the king be praised. He sent his angel and the lions, were their mouths were shut. So when we stand, the lions that were going to eat us, 
God will send an angel and their mouths will be shut. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Because God looks at only faith. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Hallelujah. The Lord has told us once we, we are going to treat each other differently from today, I believe. Because you'll know who you are. Remember who you are. And remember, if I told you, don't forgive. Neither will our Father forgive you. Hasn't he told us that? Every Sunday, even when Elder Mohia prayed here, he said, and the Lord taught us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, forgive our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Once you forgive them and let them go, go on your way. Hallelujah. Because they might have those obscenities and they might be obstinate and they have, don't have the mindset that you have. But once they see your good actions, they will bless our God who is in heaven. Why? As God does all this, when we know who we were predestined to be, that we are being reconciled to, our, to go from glory to glory, to become the children of most high God, we become a someone. Tell the other person, you become a someone. Mm. To those to your hearers, to those you interact with, because you do pro proclaim the word of God, they now say, uh -huh, I think I've seen God. Where? I have seen so and so do this and the other. And you start getting now the mindset of God. You start relating each other, encouraging each other. We become a transformed society, a transformed church, a transformed home, a transformed workplace. Uh -huh. Even if because they are satanists, when they go to their shrines, you go to your shrine also, the most glorified altar. You call upon the name of the Lord and you come back with the power saying hi. They look at you because in their shrine they were told you are going to fall. And here they are seeing you walking. Hallelujah. Because your God is sovereign. He predestined even them. Even the witch doctors. He predestined them to be conformed into the image of God Almighty. To walk into all this that we are saying. Hallelujah. Because he says he doesn't love the death of a wicked person. Glory be to God. I can see our time is gone. But at least we have something. Do you have something? Hallelujah. Let me see who has something. Glory be to God. You take it. We shall seal it in prayer in our hearts. And ask the Lord, transform us. So that in the morning service, <laughs> we shall be a different people. A different congregation. A different fraternity. A different fellowship. Hallelujah. Forgiving, walking in the image of God, allowing God to work deeply in us. And in time, this place will be like none other. For the Lord God Almighty will reign in us. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty will reign in us, in our lives. Let me give you a testimony before we leave. When I got born again, there is a lady who had really offended me in the Geshagi where I got gotten married. And she was a relative of my husband. She used to tell a lot of lies, and I was so mad, so mad that she could go and tell my mother-in-law some lies, and I purposed. One day, those were the, those early days that we were, the, you know those houses, she was in the other house and I was in the other. One day I came out with a panga. I told her, come out, and I'll smash you. You know who I am. You never tell another lie. I, eventually, I moved out from that place. I went to a stand alone. When I got born again, one day I prayed and prayed. I confessed my sins, I asked the Lord forgive me. And I said, Lord, transform me, make me into your own image. And I forgive all my enemies. Then I record, my children are about to come home and I don't have sugar to give them tea in the evening when they come from school. So I ran out of the gate. Whom do I meet? The woman. <laughs> And I've told the Lord, I've forgiven all my 
Then I said, Inang and Yawe Mwega. She at the air is took her. She looked at me and said, Ede Mwega, and she ran. And then I ran after her and I said, Mama, so and so, I forgive you. I'm born again. Because once you say, This is what I've done and I've purposed, it will confront you. Woo, Jabi. So that the devil wants to see, is that what you said true? But from henceforth, I overcame. I overcame. I overcame. Hallelujah. Don't you want to think that you overcame? Yeah, continue overcoming and overcoming. And the last one. Only you can do what no man can do. Only you can say what no man can say. So don't go expecting from people only that which God can do. And that which only God can say. You know, there's a lady who normally tells me and she's married by a pastor. You know, I normally tell my husband, I know you didn't love me even now you don't love me. Then I ask her, what does your husband tell me? He keeps quiet. I just look at her and say, why do you go asking him to love you completely? And yet he sees some flaws in you. And even you don't love him completely. Because you do see some flaws in him. It's only God who can say. Only that which you want to hear. Hallelujah. Tell the other It's only God. Hallelujah. So we shall go home knowing it's only Yes, and then loving each other as God would enable us. Encourage each other with these words. And love each other deeply. And calculate your fellowship with the Almighty so that he empowers you for the glory and honor of God our Father. And at the end of age, he'll tell you, welcome home. My beloved son, because they are no daughters or sons to God, we are all sons. Welcome home. No, I can get away the room. I to her. Father, we thank you and bless you. I have spoken your word to your people. Lord, you know what each one of us had and what capacity one had. We seal it with the seal of the Spirit of the Living God. And call upon you, God Almighty, that you water it with the power of the Spirit of the living Christ. Because you've told us in your word, out of the bellies of them that believe, livers of living water will flow. Let livers of living water flow from us as we yield to you and relate with each other and encourage each other for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. God bless you.